Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be presenting to you a method that you can use on the Calc 84 to calculate covariance. Okay, and covariance is something that um, even if you're a statistics student, you probably won't have to calculate very often. To be honest with you, um, I sort of generated this based on a need that I had with the student with whom I'm working. And so what I did was I first looked at the covariance equation, and then I tried to find a version of that equation that would be more calculator friendly. And what you see here is the formula for the sample covariance that we will use to enter into the calculator. So what I want you to do is if you're trying to follow along with this, write this formula down. I'm gonna say it in words because with all the parentheses and everything, it may look a little bit confusing. <clears throat> it is the sum of the X's, X's and Y's divided by N minus one, N being the sample size, minus the product of N over N minus one times the mean of the X values times the mean of the Y values. So that is the formula that we will use. So I'll be re-entering that in here in a few minutes. But before I do that, let me go through with you the data that I have entered in. And if you want to, you can write it down. I, don't, I didn't put in a lot so that if somebody wanted to follow along, they could. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to go to stat edit, and I'm going to show you the values that I have here. In L1, I just have all of the integers from one through nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In L2, and it is important that you put these in the same order. In L2, in the first cell, I have 10 and then 21, 34, 46, 57, 64, 71, 89, and 92. So what I did was I just kind of picked numbers that were about 10 times the value in the L1, on the L1 side. Really wasn't too worried about how the covariance would end up working out. I just wanted to have some pattern to it. So go ahead and uh, maybe pause the video if you want to take the time to enter this into your calculator or onto your computer. And then when you hit unpause, I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so I'm going to leave the stat edit menu by hitting second mode, in other words, quit to come to the home menu. And what I want to do is I want to do two variable stats. This is a necessary step. This will not work if you have not already done uh, two variable stats. So do stat, go to calculate, come down to two variable stats. And I'm pretty sure the default is L1 and L2, but just to be sure, I'm going to I'm going to input those second one comma second two close parentheses enter. Okay. Now you can look at those values if you want to, but we're actually just going to use that formula that I gave to you a second ago, but it gives you all of the values. When you do the, the two variable stats, what it does is it calculates all the values that you need for that formula. So for example, you see the mean X value here. You see the mean Y value. You see right here, the sum of all the products of X and Y, 3,044. And then somewhere in there, yeah, there, no, that's not it. I was looking for where it gave in. There we go. It's, it calculates what N is for the data. Okay. So just to clear out the screen a little bit, I'm going to hit clear. clear. And so now what I want to do is I want to use the calculator's memory of what those calculated values were to directly input those values in without me having to write down what the, what the mean X value was, or the mean Y value, or the sum of the X's and Y's. I could do that. I could have written that all down and then I could have just typed in numbers. I might've lost a little bit in rounding error, 
But here's the easier way to do that. Okay, now, first of all, I think using these parentheses is important. So I'm going to open up a set of parentheses. And the first part of the formula that I had you write down was the sum of the products of X and Y. To get that, hit the VARS button. Okay, when you hit the VARS button, you've got on the Calc 84, it's a little different on a TI 84, so you might have to experiment with that a little bit. But what you have is you have some different menus. What I want here is a, is a sum variable. So I'm going to hit the summation button, the third one over from the left. And the bottom one on here is the sum of X times Y, the sum of the products of X and Y. That's what I need. It inputs it directly in. Then in the formula, I'm dividing by, so I'm just hitting the divided by sign. I'm dividing by N minus one. So for order of operations purposes, that needs to be nested in a set of parentheses. Now I could just put in eight on here. That's fine because we know that, you know, there was nine items of data. But if you want to just do the whole thing using the VARS button, just to kind of see how it works, hit the VARS button again. Now N is under the XY uh, menu. I'm not sure exactly why but that's what it is so n minus one close the parentheses that we opened for the n minus one and also the one that we opened on the left side of the summation button for x y okay now we're subtracting the product of n over n minus one so let's get the n back n divided by and then again, I need to nest to get over operations, right? I need to nest n minus one in another set of parentheses. So vars n minus one, close that parenthesis, and then the other one. And then it's the product of that times the mean of the x's. So let's see where that is. Vars mean x, number two on here, close that parenthesis mean y it's down a little bit further number five close that parenthesis and in theory uh that will give you the correct sample covariance and it, and that is correct it is 78. so one thing that i did the only the only thing i'll mention on here that you know could be a little bit different if you're asked to calculate the population covariance uh, on the sum of the X, Y, well, the, the formula for that's going to be a little bit different. It, I, I started to say that the only difference would be that you would divide the pro the sum of the products of X and Y simply by N, but that might also change the N divided by N minus one part also. I don't think so, but it, but it might. So, uh, this will for sure work for calculating sample covariance, and, uh, we might have to look at a slightly different different formula if we wanted to do population covariance. And uh, I might just do a quick little follow-up video. I'll investigate that and maybe do a quick little follow-up video to, to make sure I've answered that correctly. Okay, so as always, feel free to put in the comment sections any questions that you have or any comments about how maybe this could be made uh, more e you know more easily shown anything along those lines is always highly appreciated thank you